This is the scary part. He said that in his time rubbing shoulders, my words, not his, with DARPA, DARPA scientists, that it appeared that the main agenda, if not the only agenda right now of DARPA, was to, this is his words, repel a future invasion of Earth. Welcome back. I'm here again with John Stewart. John, welcome back. Thank you, Sean. Always a pleasure. Definitely a pleasure. All right. So this DARPA scientist, what did he tell you? And let's just start from the beginning. Assume nobody yeah. knows, knows right. the story. Right. So I've done about probably in the past five years, 45 to 50 podcasts. And after every podcast, Sean, I've done it on yours also. I give my personal email because I'm really not on social media or very rarely is it hard for me to answer stuff on my website and stuff. Anyways, and I think it's a better way to truly communicate to people that you're you're interested personally in whatever they have to email you that is uh, tangentially related to the alien interview investigation or all things extraterrestrial phenomenon. And it's worked. You know, I've gotten some remarkable emails from people in some pretty extraordinary positions in our government, in our intelligence community. It was, without a doubt, the way that I broke the alien interview of finding out, allegedly, what military men were in that viewing gallery watching that extraterrestrial interrogation was by giving my email and the, the man, the, my main leaker, the, the, I call the chairman, answering me. So with that being said, about a year ago, I get an email and because the name could either be with a female or a male, I thought it, it was just a female because in America, that name is usually female, the way it's spelled, but it was not. He, it, he, it, it was a man, and he was a retired. He's got a degree, a master's in electric engineering, but he also has a high degree of information about microbiology and genetics, if that makes sense. And he said that he didn't really, that he didn't, he wasn't actually employed by DARPA, but like many, many military contractors and military agencies, they hire out to other companies to send help. And I think, right. you, you know, we call them jobbers or jobbers in the wrestling industry or stringers or, you know, gig yeah, yeah. workers, whatnot. Yeah. Contractors. And, and, and yeah, he's a contractor. Contractors. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So his company, by the way, he did this for 30 years. His company did contract work and he did contract work for DARPA and rubbed shoulders with them. And it was, and this is what I had to extrap extrapolate, Sean, was that I feel that, you know, he was working on a system and through the language and vernacular and the meetings and the conferences and the memos and the inner laboratory speak to one another that this was being used for not only maybe the space shuttle but for an application related to something maybe off planet if i'm speaking plain language right mm -hmm. and that distressed him greatly and that didn't stop it seemed like it proliferated as the months went on and back even at his uh, agency you know, this was filtering down towards him and his department and his and his coworkers in the uh, high tech agency that he was working for. When the United States and China clash, the world will never be the same, especially when forces beyond reality threaten to intervene. What if the United States went to war with the People's Republic of China? How would these rivals fight for supremacy on land, sea, air, and across the stochastic streams of time? What wonder weapons would be unleashed? What horrors would emerge from the irradiated sludge of the South China Sea? What heroes would rise and forever change the course of history? Tread into the deepest and darkest dimensions of the multiverse, gaze through a kaleidoscope of fractured realities, 
and bear witness to the disturbing visions of World War III from today's greatest minds in science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Weird World War, China. Available now from Bain Books at Bain.com. And he wrote this to me, and that was a year ago, and like many people that have written me, a Navy psychiatrist, many other people with very, very terrifying emails. I just keep it under wraps and, you know, you put it on the shelf and you just make a mental note of it. And when I went looking for another, for a facility where we held extraterrestrials, allegedly in the fifties and early sixties, I asked him, did he ever hear of this an acronym or this abbreviation? He said, no. And he goes, did you ever have a chance to read my essay about the extraterrestrial phenomenon? And I went, you know, no. And he sent it again. And the essay that he wrote of his experience, his extrapolation of what is going on from working closely with people that are trying to repel what might be happening. He wrote a 10 page essay that was, I would say, terrifying. And I read it, of course. And what did the essay say? I think I still had some like, yes. Okay. The first of all, he, and forgive me, folks, I'm going over a 12-page essay, and, you know, the John Stewart brain is, isn't as sharp as it was. No, he, he first said that, you know, the extraterrestrials, the run-of-the-mill extraterrestrial, or he would, uh, he would describe as, you know, the average entity coming to this planet, you know, there are no feelings, unemotional, hive mentality. Sean, we've heard this a million times, so this was nothing new, but it, it, that was remarkable to him that it was just, you know, almost like very mission oriented. I think he said in one of his uh, paragraphs of his essay, and he said that they are, you know, not different from a higher speed, higher culture uh, uh, coming upon a lower culture like that has happened on this planet for millennia that, you know, they're, they are mission oriented to provide the continuation of their species on any level and for whatever reason, whether that be material, weaponry, tactics, food, genetic material, anything that needs to be coveted or taken or used from the planet, our planet, to help their species, they are going to take and without remorse and without reproach. I mean, it's just, you know, you know, try and stop us, so to speak. That they are, and I think this is proven with our history, they are not here to destroy us, obviously, because that would have happened millennia ago. But they really don't have any feeling towards us. And I, Sean, I think I've given the, one of the greatest analogy, analogies of this is human beings in regards to fish in a stream. You know, we have the knucklehead seven-year-olds that want to throw rocks at the fish and don't care if they kill them. We have the very kind Department of Natural Resources that want to, you know, net them, tag them, get semen or biological tissue from a fish and to examine it and bring it back and maybe use that genetic material to hatch other fish and repopulate that stream. We have the fishermen who's very ecological friendly and it's CPR a capture photo release. We have the other fisherman that's there to, you know, provide sustenance for its family. And this person basically said, why is that any different from, from the beings coming to our planet? Why do they have to be so much more noble or so different from us? And I made the point of, if we believe that the human race has been manipulated by these beings. And we read that in the Quran and in the Sumerian text and in every single culture in antiquity, and including the Bible, Genesis 6, they came down and, you know, mated with females, created a progeny, hybrid race, it says that in your Bible, folks. If we are created by them, if we are part of them, then why are we so shocked? And his essay says this, that they act at times, just like we would act. And I give the, you know, the example of human beings at a stream in the woods and all of the different people and how different we all are towards the fish in that stream. To advertise on Through a Glass Darkly, email through a glass darkly ads at gmail.com. And 
this is the scary part. He said that in his time rubbing shoulders, my words, not his, with DARPA, DARPA scientists, that it appeared that the main agenda, if not the only agenda right now of DARPA, was to, and this is his words, repel a future invasion of Earth. Now, that when I put that out, because again, and I don't know still to this day why people attack me for it, I made a promise to the UFO community, when I get information, you get the information. Isn't that a good thing? So anyways, I got attacked for that. Like, oh, this is 1950s, you know, sci-fi movie. And that's true. Alien invasion, invasion of planet Earth. And so I was demanded by people on, you know, the internet and YouTube to go back and, you know, ask for a clarification. And I did. And he said that, it, yes, it's not so much of an invasion of a, you know, massive fleet that you would see in Independence Day and tear to destroy us. But, you know, they are coming back to take back what's theirs and to to take what they need to, again, perpetuate their species. Now, he did not say what race this was or what type of species this was. But, you know, he what 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 terrifies me, Sean, is that he did not back away or back down from that verbiage. And this is accredited scientist with, you know, many degrees. He claims he has a a small part or a system that was used on the space shuttle. This is not some kid in his mom's basement, you know, hoaxing John Stewart. He also, on my behest, has communicated with P Patrick Armstrong from Vetted, Jack Connors from Mystery Road. You know, liars don't seek other people to have more magnifying glass on their information, on their hoax. And, and that's all I'll say. I mean, he, this guy is for real. I mean, it's whether or not what he has extrapolated from his experience is true or not. I, you know, I hope people appreciate and Sean, I hope you appreciate as I've always come forward with. I don't know, but I wasn't there. You weren't there. Here is a person that has listened to that information for months, maybe years. And this is what he extrapolated. That to me is terrifying. And the, the coldness and the mission oriented verbiage that he used with extraterrestrials made me very concerned and, and just makes me uncomfortable because we like to think, you know, pink clouds and, you know, cotton balls in the field of lilies and, you know, and uh, life isn't like that. And, I, and I've told everyone, Sean, and I think this is a perfect segue is that part of the reason I can joke and I have gallows humor, which people also have attacked me for, I joke and, you know, is that that helps me and my ego deal with the fact that I no longer occupy the top of the food chain. And Lou Elizondo just mentioned this, I think, yesterday, where he mm -hmm. said, you know, if, if you want to take anything away from my book, we're not at the top of the food chain. He's right. So, and that's what this scientist has said. And when what this invasion or this incursion, as I think I call it, and I want to get to a Danny Sheehan theory of this, is very scary to me. It does worry me to some degree because I don't want life to be that disrupted. And it seems like possibly that it might be. And that's just my opinion. Is this the same thing that like John Ramirez talks about and Chris Bledsoe talks about, like this 2026, 2027 thing? Well, I, I again, I, people think I'm a jerk for doing this and that I'm, I'm Tom Clancy, CIA movie for doing this, but I, I can't, I can't. And talk specifics about any future event. I really, truly, I can look you in the eye. I've been asked politely by two of my intelligence people, you know, we're not going to tell you anything. Don't, you know, breach it. Don't go towards it. Don't investigate it. And I'm not. I am just simply bringing you what this, this scientist, scientist told me. But yes, I would say that Ramirez, there's another person who worked for DIA in the Pentagon. And I believe her name is Angeli. She... Their biggest, yeah. her biggest repartee is forget about everything. There's something's coming. Someone is coming to take back something. And so I guess without going towards there and holding to my word to my intelligence sources is, you know, do your own homework. And, and why are all these people talking about that? What is going on? You know, and if this is a setup, 
Sean, which again, you know, you have to look at both sides of, you right. know, Project Bluebeam and the setup for the fake alien hoax. Maybe again, do your own homework. Let's keep our eyes open, feet firmly planted to the ground and stand together and see what is going to come uh, around, uh, you know, 25, 26 and 2027. So I just spoke to Jason Sands last night in a prior interview. And yeah. he also, I asked, I also asked him this question about 2026, yeah. 27. Right. And he did confirm that, again, this is just what he heard. It doesn't mean he right. could have heard things that were information, right? right? He could have, right. But his job was as uh, op four at Nellis, and they were there to intercept communications to shore up leaks and things like that. And this is kind of, based on that knowledge or based on that role this is some of the stuff that he heard but what he heard is they're coming they're coming specifically for their equipment as well as allegedly prisoners and bodies that our government had seized, or not it might not just be our government it might be other governments that humanity had seized and the, because we treated them so well yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the contention was that we could either hand over that stuff, right, right. for number one and two. And if we did right. that, there would be number three, an exchange of emissaries or right. a potential exchange of emissaries. Right. But if we didn't, everyone associated with keeping this program secret would be exterminated. So that actually made me giddy. <laughs> like these people have been deceiving us for 80 years and if there's a fleet coming to take them out anybody that comes out after 2023 should be granted no mercy because yeah. the only reason they would come out is because they don't have a choice. So I and and not so only and not only keeping the secret Sean I don't know why uh, people, other, when I, you know, I ran for president briefly in this mm -hmm. year for the Libertarian Party, came in second place in Iowa, but I'm just saying, seriously, I don't know why we are not talking about the money that has been spent for 70 years. I mean, Stephen Greer, who's the Wikipedia of this phenomenon, is rolling around, you know, five to six trillion dollars spent on this. And, and Dr. Greer, I just talked to him. Two days ago, he gives the greatest line. Do you really think a toilet seat and a B-52 bomber cost $26,000? Come on, you know. So the money that they have spent, I think, is equally criminal. The, the lives, the lives that could have been changed in Detroit, Philly, Chicago, East L.A. I, I mean, are you kidding me? The lives, the, the, the human wreckage that we could have saved, the pain, the child going you know, to school hungry. And I, I'm not saying that to be, you know, ham handed or it, it's criminal for what to make a, a, a duplicated saucer to study biological material from a bean. For, come on. You know, well, just imagine I, if I, just, it's just, if it's we just, use, it's, yeah, just imagine if we use the combined intelligence of the human species to focus on this problem instead of focusing on, right. You know, fighting for fossil fuels in iraq and you know right and like i, I mean i mean sean i mean what, what what i mean and i'm getting really hyperbolic early in the morning but i mean we we couldn't go to the oil industry and say what is it going to take what what do you need you need three trillion dollars and you're going to go away we write you a check for three trillion dollars you will go away you will help us transfer into over you know into clean energy whatever that may be it's going to take 40 years to take every car bus plane, home, industry to transfer over in three trillion makes you get on board. Okay. Print it. Give it to them. You know, this boys club, this secret little, it's ours and not yours. And God, you human men, male men, we love, you know, little secrets between us and, you know, knowing things that nobody else knows. And I'm not that I've way. Got, I've got I'm mine. I'm not that way. I yeah, know I'm that. Not that I'm just way. saying, like men, men right. on top of the pyramid. Boy, they've got this fetish. Well, I, I know something you don't, and I'm going to be on top of this. And well, John, guess what? what? Is it, you know, it's just guess crazy. what? 
guess what? I have a message for those men. Tick tock, tick tock. Yeah, they're coming absolutely. for you. They're coming for you. Sean, I've said it. When the peasants, and I'm one of them, come with the pitchforks and torches like in the Frankenstein movie, when the villagers come, they're not coming to my house, congressmen, contractors. They're coming to your house. I'm not threatening you. I'm telling yeah. you. I'm, 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 I'm not saying humans. I'm like, not saying I'm humans. Yeah, I'm when, not saying yeah. humans. I'm yeah. just saying, like, there, if this is true, if what Jason is saying is true, if what he heard was right, that's right. They're they're coming for these people, and anybody right. that comes out now should not be granted any form of amnesty whatsoever. Yeah. The yeah. only reason they're coming out is to save their hides, and that's it. That's the only reason. Sean, so, the black community in Chicago is absolutely up in arms that we are giving illegal immigrants who came over here illegally nine thousand dollars a month. We put them in fancy hotels. This is happening right now. And the black community is finally waking up and going, yeah. wait a minute, I've been asking for a decent school, decent school buses, teachers, a higher salary for teachers, better books, an after school program. So if I'm a single mom, I can go nine to five and I know my child will be in a, a daycare program and you're not going to give me any of that, but you're giving it to people who came across illegally nine thousand you know dollars in a hotel well, room. I mean, it's just, it's, you know. th th this drives people some some I'm, I'm trying to avoid being political but some people on the political spectrum nuts but yes. these people are literally literally criminals and the yeah. reason they're criminals is because their very first act on american soil was to break the law and what law the did law. they break they illegally entered the country Right. So they're criminals. Now yep. they're not, you know, they're, uh, you know, that doesn't imply that they're all murderers and rapists. Right. Some of them right. are, but right. their very first act was a criminal act. So every right. single one of them is a criminal. Right. So why are we rewarding criminality? I don't, there, there I seems to be a something. really good question. There <laughs> seems to be something behind all this that is not conventional it's just well there's a fet there's a fetishism in politics for the past 70 years and it's you know we won't ask you to work hard we won't ask you to stand up on your own two feet we'll give you everything we'll coddle you from cradle to grave but you got to vote for us every two years plain and simple if you can make yeah, that you, deal, you got to give us we'll unquestioning loyalty and servitude completely un unquestioned loyalty blind eye every at every step of the step of the way Vote for us, and I will take care of you from cradle to grave. What does that yeah. get us? A disorganized rabble of freeloaders who are waiting for uh, a handout instead of a middle class that is thriving and hardworking, knows the value of a dollar, knows the value of hard work. That's the way America was, should be, and, and should be in the in, in, was. It isn't, and should be in the future. Yeah, I think. It's almost like something stirring all this stuff because everything, all this stuff is happening yeah. at the worst possible time. Yeah. Oh, right? God, so true. Uh, it, so uh, there are like three events in the next six months that where okay. there is an increased risk of instability. The first is on September 18th with the Trump sentencing. Like you're, you're going to put a presidential candidate in jail two months before the election. Really? Have you thought through that? But, but Trump's going to end democracy. We, we threw a president <laughs> off the ballot, put in a woman that has no votes until two weeks ago, and we're going to jail the other party's presidential nominee. But Trump's going to ruin democracy. After, after yeah, right. someone tries to assassinate him. Right. Of course. Which we've all forgotten. Yeah. Little event. And oh, by the Sean, way, don't oh, worry right, about well, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say anymore because I'm worried YouTube will flag me with disinformation. Right. Right. Uh, it, it, yeah, there are other aspects of that case that are also very, very weird. And then, so so you have September 18th is the first one. Election Day is the next one. And then the inauguration is the third. And, Good point. And there's some, there's some crazy talk that I'm already hearing. Like, well, if he, again, I'm not, I'm not advocating for trump or harris i think you know i think both parties it's you know two wings on the same bird right i think they're both right. corrupt i think 
But, Absolutely. Criminal. But one one party is playing with fire. You have Jamie Raskin coming out and saying, it doesn't matter if he wins, because then we're just going to invoke Section 3 of the 14th Amendment and declare it invalid. Are you are you listening to yourself? But Trump's going to take away democracy. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, That's what they're how saying. Is that, how is that going to play out? Think through that. You're not thinking yeah. through that. So... Uh, I think they want the chaos. This is, say whatever you want, but it was called the, I believe, the Klaus Piven strategy of basically undermining a country. And you simply, it's very simple. You overwhelm every, every service. You overwhelm the healthcare. You overwhelm the schools. You overwhelm the jail. You overwhelm the welfare system. You oversaturate the border. And this is how you bring an, a democracy to its knees. Why do they want to do that? I've been in politics in the most crooked state, in the most crooked, corrupt city in America. I've been a politician in that for 30 years and have friends on both sides of the aisle. That's one hell of a freaking feat to have both people say, oh, John Stewart's a pretty nice guy. Oh, yeah, he's well liked. But I'm yeah, saying, you're talking Chicago. I'm not, not You're talking, talking to the machine. The I'm Chicago, saying, I managed, right. I manage the corruption, like uh, the, the, the corruption landmines, like a like a downhill slalom skier. My point is, I still don't understand why the basic concept of this country is: you do what you can, you work, you make your money, and you do what you want with your with your money. I don't understand. Don't work. We'll feed you. We'll give you money. Take it easy. I, I, that I don't understand that that makes you, that makes people vote for you. Okay. Well, in Chicago and Illinois for 60 years, it's worked. But that system is now being to toppled on itself with these illegal immigrants coming in. And, and the, you know, the black communities are absolutely waking up to how they've been lied to for 60 years and, and they not, should be you know, pissed off they should yeah, be pissed absolutely off. oh my god they're paying absolutely. taxes too right they're living they're in a war zone too. crumbling schools crumbling bridges no backup you know the police are afraid to respond and i don't blame them i mean it's just it just it's just uh we don't i, I don't have to go to the Gaza Strip. I don't have to go to Fallujah. I, I've got it on the south side of Chicago. I got to take a That's twenty minute car thing. drive. We're spending billions of dollars supporting a side that's going to lose. It's right. just demographics. They're outnumbered right. three to one. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And instead of helping people here, we're just overtaxing, printing more money, debasing the currency, and fighting like funding a war that we're that that side's not going to win. It's just right. end it. Just get yep. to the table, end it before it gets worse. And <laughs> they just, I mean, like you watch the media, it is just like pure propaganda. Like I'm a former military officer. What they did in Kursk was moronic. They took their best units, like sure they're having success, but the Russians are going to eventually cut them off and kill them. Right. It's just a, right. it is, it is a gimmick in order to try to claim more value at the negotiating table. Right. But it, it's not going to work. It's just going to like, if the Russians, you know, sent, well, I mean, maybe they are, maybe, they, maybe they are sending, you know, these, these, and the Chinese are set are, are encouraging these 10 million people to come into our border, but you know, it's done in a little bit more of a intelligent way, right? Because they're just using our elites against us. And, right. and by the way, this is not, we're being divided, you know, political party against political. This isn't about political parties. This is about freedom and slavery, truth and lies. And the best way to evaluate it is to look at the people who are in charge. Most of them are corrupt. They lie to us constantly. They don't provide any real services. They take our money and they debase our currency. So people right. don't need to be looking at each other. They need to be looking up. Like these right. people need to go, right? right? Either through the mechanisms of government, which by the way, they've completely and utterly corrupted, right? I don't trust the system in any way, shape or form. No, 
I'm just trying to keep well, my head down. It's turning into an oligarchy of rich people running the, the country. That's what they're turning. It is that right now. It is a bunch of rich guys running the country with Congress, a, another bunch of rich white uh, rich white guys doing their bidding for the oligarchs. That we got it. We you know we have an oligarchy and a, a constitutional oligarchy. That's exactly what we have. And it's I just I just hope that somewhere down the line without a bloody revolution that we can change that to some degree. Yeah. And I, I don't know if this whole alien thing is their way of make it come crashing down. I have been telling everyone for five years, follow the money, follow the money, follow the money. I, I don't know when people are going to start listening to me, but it's all crumbling down. And the only thing that is saving us is our bully position with our military that is stationed and, travels the seas all around the world and at one point that won't be enough when the petrodollar starts to stumble and hiccup and trip well, the petro um, john the petrodollar is already dead it died on june 14th yeah, bricks, of this year right, with bricks it's it's it, it's you know it's it's no, no 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 it literally did so the petrodollar was a treaty that we signed with saudi arabia, with saudi arabia in right 1973 june 14th 1973 and when it came time to renew it, and, and all it does is it says that the Saudis were required to sell all their oil in right. dollars, in dollars, dollars only. In On June 14th of this year, the, the Saudis, was it this year? Yeah, the Saudis, so maybe it was, I can't remember if it was 73 or 74. It was probably 74. I think 74. They, op they opted out. They decided, no, we're not going to renew this. So the petrodollar is dead. Yeah. And you know what was disturbing about it? No articles in the Wall Street Journal. Of course not. No articles in the New York Times. No articles in the Los Angeles Times. Well, there was, uh, Sean. So there was, I read one article where they said, well, you know, it's a tacit renewal that Saudis don't actually have to acknowledge it. And I'm like, what are you? <laughs> now, now we're reporting that. Let me get the, I don't want to be Gilbert Godfrey or Joe Pesci. Let me get this straight. So, we are now honoring global agreements with with tacit. It's just it, it expired, you know. But you and I are still, yeah, okay, we're still on the same page. I mean, come on. I mean, do you think we're stupid? Please, God's sakes! I mean, it's making me well, crazy. I mean, President uh, Vice President Harris was never the border czar. Why would you lie about that, John? Why would you lie about that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you see that Dude, one? Yeah, that was a lie I, again. No, no judgment on Harris on with Harris. Yeah, no, I, I, no judgment on Harris or anything like that. But how could you look out to millions of people and repeat that bold faced lie when there's plenty of evidence, video, press conferences where Joe Biden is appointing her and this and that? Like, what is going on? Like, yeah. how stupid do they think we are? Yeah, all Trump's got to do in the debate is, you, you, oh, now the border. You had you had four years to fix it. You were right next to him. You didn't. You lied to us. You beguiled the American public that he was not cognitively able to run this country. And you're going to lower food prices and prices the first day you get into office. Price Why controls. Why do it now? What you did? Yeah. Price, oh, who does Nixon, price controls? Nixon price control because that really worked in the 70s. It didn't. And so, yeah. So, and if you had some grand scheme, why not do it right now? I mean, that's all. Trump has to say he doesn't have to call her names. He doesn't have to, you know, make fun right. of her. That's all he's got to do is stick to the facts, shut his mouth. Well, even stand this, there. we're going to stop taxing tips. Which administration started taxing them? Like, right, them. Right. You could have stopped this three and a half years ago. And you exactly. didn't do it. Again, I'm not trying to make this political. It's just, and then not to mention the soft coup that just happened in front of all of us a week right. after they tried to assassinate a former president. Right. Like, they take down the other one. It's startling, you know. To, and, and Sean, you know, too. It's like, it's like, I, I would love Kamala to just explain. Tell me the benefit of en masse, willy nilly, letting thousands of illegals enter the country every day, not knowing who they are. They don't have any ID. We their names. They're not signing the guest book, as Dennis Miller once said, which I thought was a great glib analogy. They are coming in. We have no idea who they are. We're not even counting them. We're not even. Getting, giving them an ID so my friends plead the police officers when they get stopped or pulled over or a question, they at least know basically who they're talking to and that person's on a computer system. Explain, to, if I was Trump, 
on the debate. Explain to the American people how for four years you thought it was a great policy to let these people in without any organization whatsoever of tracking who they are. Well, well John, them they're, some sort they're of too ID. busy Stop reading your emails. People. They're too busy reading your emails. Right. right. They, they, you know, they have, they have, right. you know, too much. Right. It's, it, it's unbelievable. It, it, yeah. I don't, I think it's a, I think it's mostly stupidity, but it feels like there's a force behind all this. That's not, that's I, not Sean, human. I agree. Brother, yeah. you and I are on the same page. There's something again, Again, what did I just say five minutes ago? I'm not being combative with you. I've been in right. Chicago, Illinois politics for 30 years. I know all of them. I know all their secrets. My wife and I have been at the parties. My wife and I know them. We went golfing with them. We've been to dinners with all these people. I can't figure it out. And I agree with you 10,000%, Sean. There is something that I, as a no basically a normal person inside the gate, cannot figure out. I, I What a great statement. I totally agree with you. Something's going on. And I, if it, hey, if it's, if it's, we're not even keeping up with our population, why can't you communicate with this? Hi, friends. It's John Stewart, your president. We're not making as many babies as we should. And the population of America is going down. We have all of this land, rural land in Montana, Idaho, Wisconsin, you know, and we're going to do an organized, you know, a, 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 a let in. We feel that 1,500 immigrants a day are going to be let into this country. We are going to photograph them. We're going to give them IDs. We're going to give them a type of social security number where they will not be able to draw out of social security until they put in 10 years of payments to social security. They can use our schools. They can use our hospitals. We'll know them. We'll know them by face. We'll know them by name. We've got a list here of where special skills are needed. We can place these people for jobs. Do you know if I put a website up if I was the federal government or the president, I put a website up to business people to say, what do you need as far as skilled labor, skill trade or labor? That website would be overwhelmed. And we can't take these immigrants and place them instead of busting them to Martha's Vineyard. Maybe there's a contractor in Montana that needs specialized people and mechanics and and that 1,500 people, you're getting five quality mechanics a day. And we take them to Montana. I mean, it, with their families. Is this so hard to explain to the American people? And yes, yes, Democrats, you'll get your votes. Oh, yeah, you'll get your you'll get your coveted votes. But let's organize this. Let's make this benefit to America. Let's make it measured. Let's control it to some degree. Let's make sure we know who these people are. And make sure they're part of the system, not but just. But there's taking some. The, the, there's something even in, beyond in that. Beyond that too, because it's these like low skilled folks who are being let in, and then on the other hand, there's this persistent propaganda for Americans not to reproduce. You have forms of psychological sterilization. I'm not going to be specific about that. I, I think I you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely, right? sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that are you know just basically being pushed and normalized. Right. People, family, uh, raising, it's possibly staying home with your children till they're three. Oh, oh my God! And say it isn't so. So there's, it's almost like there's a, a push for depopulating certain segments of the U.S. population. I, I, I can't agree more. Can't agree more. I take abortion too. Like, like that's a big thirty million. Uh, again, I'm not going to. Yeah, like, like the Supreme Court basically just said states get to decide. If your state wants to, <laughs> wants to murder the baby on the way out the the birth canal, have at it. Right. That's that's your. Or if they want to, you know, put, the put women in camps, was, put, was put women in camps and prevent them from using contraception, have right. at it. Right. Both extremes are right. nuts. Right. right. But they, but they didn't ban it. They just reversed right. but it's being right. portrayed as the as if oh my oh my god yeah yeah so again i'm not making a statement on abortion but again if we're looking at policies to depopulate by or, encouraging that yeah. and screaming it's when it's limited in certain parts of the country and not you know right right that's, I always say, you know, the, try, why why can't we solve getting pregnant? Why can't we go to the root of it? And and instead of having to take care of it at the end phase of the gestation of a child, I mean, and anybody out there listening to Sean and I, Sean, I'm not speaking for you, or or but 
But for me, I'm pro life because I've seen my daughter's birth. I mean, it changed my life. But I understand I've never been a 16 year old girl pregnant without any right. fr- without any family, without any money. I get that. And I want to tell people just because you're pro life doesn't mean, or just because you're pro choice, we don't want anybody giving high fives because you have the right to have an abortion. I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a hearty decision to make. What did, and, what did and, Clinton and, say? You know, Clinton said something like abortion should be safe, something, and rare, right? Right. I think that's kind of no, a absolutely. reasonable middle ground, and we're not there anymore. Yeah, but let's stop giving each other high fives. Not, Anyways, yes. Yeah, my Aliens point's not to, to talk abortion. about the merits. Welcome or, to John Stewart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not fault, you know, son. taking a position on a poor abortion. I am not either. Yeah, uh, but I'm just saying it is, if you had an array of policies that you wanted to put out to help slowly depopulate <laughs> it's a pretty good policy if but it's Sean, right ex- in there explain to me you you're depopulating the black community but you're you're increasing the population of the spanish community what why i i, I, do, I don't I mean, know <laughs> I, I, I just but this is what's happening you are totally on the money yeah I, oh, I, the same I, thing. I, I, and not just blacks, whites too, right? Well, of course, I mean, whites. You're, right? you're, you're, but, you're, you're. Well, let's not even, let's step all the way back. It's not even about race. Well, it's, it's, no, it's Americans. Not. It's Americans, about Americans. Right. You're right. You're, you're, you're pushing policies that seek to depopulate the population that is here in preference right. to a population that's streaming in. Now, one could argue, I think you, the business argument, that maybe there are business interests in the background or like, we need more workers and we don't have enough yeah. workers, right? But yeah, that's one of my I, interests. Yeah, of course. I think it's, but then you also have AI coming, right? Sean, Sean, I'm in the automobile industry. Is, are people listening to me? Every single man or woman that owns, operates, manages anything to do with cars. Are you people listening to me? Every single man, woman company that has anything to do with the automobile industry in Chicago, from nuts to bolts, needs mechanics. They stopped even putting signs up, wanted signs, because no one is answering the call. So that is my point. If we have these people coming over the border, can you control it a little bit? Can you stop gap it? And then weed these people to areas in the country where their skills are needed. It does this not make sense. My God. I, know. I mean, it's I know. just like, I, I, it's like, I'm just like, I'm in an or a George Orwell novel. I mean, it's just, I, I, yeah. And, well, and, and, and we're, we're letting everybody killing Americans, but then we let non-Americans in, in some kind of, it's like we're washing or it's like, we're, what would you call that? When you when you're adding water to a glass of milk, you're, you're watering solution, down right. basically. Yeah. Right. You, you, the, the American and indig- uh, population that's here now, you're I diluting, mean, you're diluting, you're diluting the, the, there you the go. American population. Why? Why? I, oh God. I, you know what? I cannot wait to stop all that. I, I, I can't wait to just retire and go fishing. I really, I'm so well, fine. I mean, may, maybe sorry maybe to have a meltdown just, on your show, but I it's, no, 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 no. Maybe maybe it's to generate more conflict. Maybe it's to cause more death. I don't know, Sean. If you and I were dictators of a country, wouldn't the biggest thing we'd want to do is yes, keep the borders safe, but be homogenous and uh, copacetic with the surrounding states and countries around us to make sure our population is healthy, is educated, is thriving. And we're solving problems as they come. We're anticipating problems mm-hmm. for people as the government. Is, doesn't that ensure you and I staying in power for as long as possible? I, I mean, did I wake up? You know, did I sleep for 40 years? I, I think really I think these people the are so. Strategy. I the agree. Strategy. I, I think these people are so arrogant that they think that, I mean, they're controlling what we see and hear. Yeah. And, and they have yeah. been for probably since there's been print media right yes. yes and i because of the internet we're only beginning to see how absurd it is i mean it's right. absolutely absurd like remember remember at the beginning of the pandemic i keep saying this i should stop 
But it was just like, if you said, hey, there's a place in Wuhan, it's called the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and they focus on novel coronavirus research, mm. it's a lab leak? Racist! In, racist! In, wait, wait, that's racist? Village, but but, but you're telling me, <laughs> but you're telling me that, like, a bat jumped and bit a penguin, and then oh, these, like... He, these savages at the wet market. It's called a pangoon or something like that. Not a penguin. A pang. A, a or pang. Pangolin. Pan pa pango. It's like pangolin or pangolin or something like that. At the virus. Oh my God! Yeah. You're pulling John Stewart's here. Yeah, right. It's not the villagers that we know now went through the garbage at Wuhan, <laughs> took the rubber glove. Folks, folks, listen to me. That the villagers go through the garbage at the Wuhan bio facility and wash the rubber gloves. So they can use them in the in, in in various industries or the open market. That wouldn't spread it. No, don't don't worry about it. Don't worry. Yeah. So I crazy theory. And then of course FBI two years later comes out or whatever comes out and says that's the most likely a lab leak theory. But if you said that, right. if you said that, you know, back when it first came out, you were racist. So it's just yep. a that epithet no longer has any. If there's something about the power. truth that is, and I am not being one of these guys, but there is just something, Sean, about the basic truth that is that terrifies people in power, and I don't understand it. Again, it's to the John and Sean dictatorship. What I want to make everyone healthy, educated, thriving. I. What is the and big if you deal mess that, up, that, that I'm saying that it, it came it, from it, Wuhan? It, what I mean, why? What, why, why, what is, what is that? I mean, I, I well, just, no, there's, I there's, there's a it. reason that there's a, there's a definite reason. It's oh, because, because we, I just don't have we it. funded the development of this thing. Well, that, that's, that's why true. was for right? Dietrich. I, if I, if you, if you would like me, because I said this on my podcast four years ago, because we talked to the man that came up with this theory that ended up being true, which was the United States army at Fort Dietrich gave, this uh, novel vi coronavirus to University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Then they took yeah. this to the Wuhan laboratory to reconstitute it into whatever they were doing and why wherever they were doing it. Yeah, so they a could do gain of function so research right. in gain a foreign function. country. Yeah, yeah so they could do gain of function so research. Is right. in, in That's right. And this is why yeah. it came from a bat. And, you know, don't listen to it. It bit a in and, and, and a bit. they ate it. And because they're, you know, they're, Dude, I'm going to laugh mean, about just, that. It bit a penguin. You are the funniest freaking guy. I no, I said pangolin, penguin. but it sounds like a penguin. Oh, it, oh, I thought you said penguin. Yeah, was it was a It might as well have been. It could have been and it bit. And then the penguin bit a clown and the clown, you know, pissed on a dumpling and someone ate the dumpling right. from the trash Can with the gloves and it hit and it bit a kangaroo and it swam across the pacific and it's just like ended up in San the Fran. stories that they tell yeah. to, and meanwhile fauci's just sitting there i'm retired now i i right. killed seven seventy mil, seven million people but right. uh, you're all liars right it's just like are you kidding me when that email came out from fauci that said no he told one of his friends the mass really don't do anything how were the FBI or the State Department or the state the, the, the Attorney General of America not at his doorstep saying, you're going to jail? Sorry. You're a lying well, sack I, of shit. If that's not a law, we'll make it a law, and you're going to go to jail for being a lying sack of shit. Because that's what Fauci is. When he when we yeah, saw I, that email. I, yeah, I don't think that would be enough, but I think it's enough that he said funded we make the, the development law. of this thing. I think, I think it's enough that he funded the development of this thing that's and then right. denied it. And then, right. uh, and there was an there was an article in Nature by all these scientists who quickly at the very beginning of this pandemic knew from the fact pattern what it was, and yet they still wrote an article to perpetuate the other narrative. And several years later, they pulled the article. Like the right. issue is, and stepping back, we we should we probably said the the c word way too many times i actually had a video pulled because oh dear god i said something else i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna i, I just looked at medicare data and it was let's just don't don't come on this because we get me in the trouble okay i looked at medicare data looked at where there were spikes also mm -hmm. looked at what was introduced at the time where there was uh excess deaths and you could imagine what that was don't say it yeah 
but if you say that or even hint well you can kind of get away with hinting at it but that narrative is disinformation and you will have your video pulled isn't it true that regular flu deaths in america were at whatever whatever millions and the virus flu deaths for those two years were very compatible like it was just like folks i had i had i got it twice and it was weird sunburn on my back feeling the burning right here like it was first day of football practice and you were running and you weren't in shape i got it twice so it was real but i saw a study where it simply replaced the common or one of the common variants of flu which kills four million people a year we don't panic about that and the you know that virus killed five you know five million maybe and they think that some of that was you know intubating people and blowing out their lungs so to speak with yeah. respirators and whatnot so i'm just saying so we had a little bit stronger of a flu strain than normal and we have destroyed an economy because of it and my wife and I just ate at a Chinese restaurant yesterday that was once another Chinese restaurant that could not take the lockdown. And the restaurant next to it, Tuscany, the Italian restaurant in business for 32 years, shut down because of it could not handle the lockdown. This is what we did. Okay. I'm semi-retired because of the lockdown. I just couldn't take it anymore. I didn't, I didn't want to work anymore. Hard. I, I didn't want to work harder. I had nothing else to give to the automobile industry. I had to take a, a lease on our property. I just couldn't do it anymore. This is what you did to all these families, people like me. Okay, whatever. Well, it drives increased dependency. On, oh, you know, totally. Right. And, and I don't know why you want people dependent on you. I don't want people to look at me for their welfare check. Me, the government, every month. I, I, I what? Because they're gonna vote. They're gonna keep me in office. That's their. That's the theory. That's the philosophy, well, Sean. And yeah, you know what? We'll never problem. change that. Yeah, that's the yeah, problem. That's the, we that's solve the problem it. with. That's it. Yeah. And you can't get yeah, them to I, not, I, not believe that. I almost think that in order to run for office. My freaking blood pressure's gone up. <laughs> go, you know, go I, ahead. I'll shut this up. This energizes me. I like to rant. I like to rant. I, I, I just, you know, I have to get it out. But I have to do it in a moderate way. I know. Because if this goes out to thousands of people, right? Oh Someday maybe millions. But again, look, and Good I always there. say this, the operating philosophy behind this channel is truth. That's it in all its beauty and ugliness and yep. the truth will set you free and i it, it's just it's it's like watching clown town right it's just like mm. <laughs> it's just politics it is. is clown town right now it it's is insane it's not it's the warner brothers movie the the, the the looney tunes music playing every time people get on camera and you know i mean uh, wow i don't even then know who's in charge right now like let's <laughs> Like, who's in charge right it's president got to be like Bi charge? biden yeah it's got to be the speaker of the house communicating with biden's chief of staff a couple of other you know let a couple of other legislative aides of biden that's in jill biden this is who's running the country right now but make make no make no mistake about it and you know there's nothing wrong with that with every politician there are very intelligent capable people to at least relay the main message of the head politician but yeah i, I mean it's kamala's politicking joe's taking a nap i mean who's who's making the decisions i you know what a scary it is Boy, it if is i was scary. china this is the time to this is the time to go well let's say we're in the middle of august they haven't invaded taiwan yet so there's three times three months that are ideal for invading taiwan this is one of right. them this is we're like halfway through so we i saw that okay. i saw that video about that yeah china's strategy and what times of year yeah you're right yeah so Scary. april may is the next is the next yeah. window and yeah i i don't know where we're gonna be after january it, it could be but i don't think there are a number of ways that whole scenario could play out right it could be an extreme version where there's mass riots and you know whoever is whoever wins tries to overexert federal authority yes in which in which like I, i'm trying to make i'll give an example of like a trump overreach and i'll give an example of a harris overreach just to try to be balanced but let's say 
Trump wins and he's just and he and he basically invokes the Insurrection Act in New York and says these people are out of control with all this lawfare. I'm sending in troops to seize them and lock yeah. them up. Okay. Mm-hmm. That would cause and then you have New York, which just has no choice but to secede a bunch of liberal or you know, blue states secede, et cetera. Do I think that would happen? No, but it's it's a possibility. On the other hand, and this is even a less likely scenario, Kamala Harris could could say, we're ignoring what the Supreme Court said. Any state that doesn't allow abortion up to birth, you know, ha- must comply. And well, Texas She cuts says, off the funding because Congress yeah. has, has the right to... to yeah, so to let's defer- say she cuts off the funding and then Texas yeah. said, okay... Texans aren't aren't going to be paying the federal government any taxes. Federal, federal income tax gets cut off from Texas. That's it. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And then, yep. and then, okay. So that you know, it's still moderate escalation. Then the U.S. government tries to send troops to Texas, <clears throat> or even better, this is actually more likely. Texas says, you know what, you're not doing anything on the border. This almost happened actually this year, and they said, you know what, we're just going to handle the border. Right? We're gonna we're gonna shoot anybody, or we're gonna mine it whatever and the u.s government says no absolutely not it is our authority and they said no so then they sent down troops overreach and there's right. some sort of some right. sort of issue there very real possibility another possibility is you kind of you know jamie raskin has his way if you know trump wins and you know tries to <laughs> tries to procedure him out of our office so then trump sends troops to see you know to surround congress and sees them right right there's a lot of crazy things and again i am not i hope it's peaceful i hope it's but yeah, look i'm also absolutely. a science fiction writer right i can come up with this stuff very very easily or you could just have sporadic riots and acts of violence all over the place and and um, what about if it what about if, if the possibility trump wins the democrats are exasperated they really didn't like kamal in the first place he wins there's a ceasefire in Gaza, which is very close to happening. There's a ceasefire. Russia takes the territory it, 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 it is occupied. That whole thing, you know, go, calms down with a ceasefire. We build the border wall. We have a controlled entry system from Mexico into America. We do. We're not. We're never going to pay down the, the deficit, but maybe we can stop the deficit from growing. I think that's a very real possibility. There is a decent possible ending for all of this that would be good for it. We start drilling again. Gas comes down. The only way to get your food down, folks, is when gas comes down, which transports your food, your food prices will come down. And gas that produces electricity at your supermarkets is less your food prices come down. And we get into a slight, a softer recessional hit and we bounce from it and you know and, and and we go towards a little bit of prosperity housing prices collapse where now 25 year olds can buy a house now once they get married and i don't know i think there's a real possibility of a very normal peaceful you know everyone calm down go to their corners type of solution i hope the world takes that i really do i hope iran does not escalate anything and it literally well, cooler heads prevail and and, that's the other and, and, issue. Yeah. Like this, it's, it's, like it's these the wild card. Elites can't, they don't have the resources in the long run to escalate any of these conflicts. Let me, let me tell you why. So, no, they don't. It's a great point. In, in Russia right now, Russia, like in the first two years of that war, we would have run through Russia like shit through a goose. Yes. They were so incompetent. They, yeah, but if we face them now, we would take massive casualties. And the reason we would is we're trained and we're geared up to fight insurgencies and counterinsurgencies because that's where we, you know, we plussed up JSOC, right? right. Everything was about right. special forces, all that. But right. we didn't invest as much in our conventional capabilities. Well, this is high intensity conflict in Ukraine, right? We can, we fought that in the past, but we don't have any more recent experience with it so but, in but they only have three thousand tanks left russia can't we take a huge hit out of their tanks with our close air uh, combat 
could support but tanks don't the, uh, tanks t- tanks matter but they don't matter as much as they used to drones can we carpet bomb the shit out of them we, i don't know I, well I, we would have an event but they also have the best air defense systems in the world like the sa 400 you know right. or the s 400 true et cetera. true so the issue that we face <laughs> is any conflict that we'd have on the ground with the russians we would burn through troops I like there would that. be extremely yeah. high casualties yeah right so like we have resources now but the moment within a few months the powers that be are gonna be like wow we're we're, we're kind of running I mean, we're already running out of ammunition but nobody thought ahead in february 2022 in terms of expanding ammunition facilities and stuff like that like there have been uh, several ammunition fires in the united states right right and right. they're not being reported on they're not because they're they can, you know, potentially acts of sabotage, right? And I don't blame the Russians for doing that. Like, w- w- I mean, they're those bullets are killing Russians. So why? Right. So you have a conflict where you start to burn through men and materiel, and the U.S. government's like, "Wow, we're not able to recruit people. Why aren't we able to recruit people?" Well, there's an obvious answer for that, but I'm not going to get into it. So then they're going to say, oh, "I think we need a draft." It's not going to be like the Vietnam War, where the right's like, "Yes, sir, we'll send our men," and the left is like, you know, you, you know, you know, absolutely rioting. You're right. going to have 20 million veterans who come up and say, "The hell, the hell, you take my kids!" Right? You've spent the last eight years calling us domestic terrorists, <laughs> and you think we're going to serve? But now you want my your progeny. regime? Go yeah. fuck yourself. Right. Right. So you're going to have both sides oppose it. So I don't know if the powers that be realize it. I mean, I had somebody the other day who was asking about my kids and they knew I'd be in the military. And she's like, oh, are they going to go in the military, too? And I'm like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Why? Right. They're like the people who are running things aren't sending their kids anywhere. Even Biden's son, he was like a judge advocate general in the rear with the gear. Right. He wasn't fighting anybody. He's just doing lawyer shit. So like, th- I think these people are on, f- uh, are on tougher ground than they realize. Yeah, I agree. I totally so, agree. All right. How do we get away from aliens, John? So what, what do you got to sl- last word on, al- on, on, e- on ETs? What do you um, want to tell the audience about just, non-human I, intelligences? Yeah. You're going to have to come to a fact that that this is a reality. It's been a reality for well over 10,000 years that the secret, the truth is more bizarre than you can imagine because it involves the misappropriation of funds, murder, and the acknowledgement that the people on this planet do not occupy the top of the food chain. And that is disconcerting. I, I think our society has benefited from alien technology. Just look around us. Look what we're doing now. We're doing this on my iPhone and and whatnot. And that's a good thing. And that I tell people, look, you know, r- strengthen your spirituality. Open your eyes. Love your family. Realize what's important in your life. And like 10,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, there's always been homo sapiens sapiens on this planet there always probably will and if we have to encounter or if it is the fact that this becomes a stark reality to our planet some some sort of disclosure or event that we're going to get through it we're only going to get through it by locking hands brother to brother neighbor to neighbor city to city it's the only way we get through it and realize that in a good way you know, we are, this has been said, allegedly, from extraterrestrials to intermediaries. You're the freak show of the galaxy. We can't figure you out. Really? You, you, yeah, yes, sir. Now, I'm saying that allegedly, but I've heard that from more right. than one intermediary with extraterrestrials that in so much, in my vernacular, we're the freak show of the galaxy in a good way. They don't, they, they have no idea why a, a mother would crawl through a granite mountain to save her child dying on the other side. They can't figure that out. 
why we don't have a hive mind, why we are emotional. It, it, it's it to, to why we have souls the way we do. And th- we need to hold on to that. We are special. And I'm not saying that in my ego or my egotistical way, because there's eight kajillion planets in, in life out there, but we are special and we need to understand that. And, and we only get through this, whatever this is. I think I'm more afraid of, like I've said this over and over again. And Stephen Greer said this to me, be more afraid of your government than an extraterrestrial. Yeah. Take that as you I will. know I am. I'll end with that. All right, brother. It's always a pleasure. Despite the as, far, as far off a good topic, get the rant, a My good Saturday morning up. rant. Right. Yeah, exactly. So I it's always a pleasure, on. my friend. You're a good friend. Right. Thanks, Sean. Okay. You too, brother. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit like and subscribe. And also hit the notification button so you can be notified whenever I post new content. Thank you. Now, if you're enjoying the channel and you want to support it, there are several things you can do. In fact, there are five things you can do. The first thing you can do is just buy my books. I got plenty of books out in the market right now, and I would prefer that folks buy a book rather than giving me direct support because they get something out of it. They have a real tangible product. The second way you can support me is by becoming a member on YouTube or becoming a patron on Patreon and just go to either site and it'll explain everything. third way you can support the channel is by checking out my merch site, which is here. There's plenty of stuff that you could get to support the channel. And I'd appreciate that you, you have it and you can wear it. Not only do you help support the channel, but you also help promote the channel. And I appreciate that. The fourth way that you can support the channel, and this is really easy, is anytime you want to buy something on Amazon, literally just go to the description below and click on any link, literally any link. The channel gets a cut of that, and it costs you no extra money. You just go through the link as I'm part of the Amazon Affiliates Club. The fifth and final way you can support the channel is through donations. Now, I don't prefer these because it's more of an expression of gratitude, but you don't really get anything out of it as a subscriber to the channel. However, if you decide to do these options, there's two options. There's Buy Me A Coffee, which is a separate site, and there's also you can go through YouTube with either a Super Chat, a Super Sticker, or a Super Thanks. Again, I prefer Buy Me A Coffee because that organization takes less money than Amazon does. But either way, I appreciate any support you, you are willing to give the channel. So thank you very much and keep watching. I really appreciate it.